This is Five on Your Side at Noon, focused on you. And we start today at noon with breaking news. Legendary St. Louis Cardinals manager Whitey Herzog has died. He was 92. Herzog led the Cardinals to three World Series appearances in the 1980s, winning one in 1982. His Cardinals notched National League pennants in 85 and 87. Few managers were as loved by players and fans alike as the White Rat. We'll go live to sports director Frank Cusimano with more on his life and career in just a moment. First, we want to go to weather. We are in storm alert this afternoon as severe storms are possible later today and into this evening. Thanks for being here. This is a live look outside where you can see things are pretty quiet at the moment. I'm Kay Quinn. Storms should be arriving later today. They could bring heavy rain and hail. Meteorologist Jim Castillo is watching developments. He's here with the weather first forecast, Jim. Yeah, hi Kay. So even a chance of tornadoes in here, but the better chance of that is north and west of us. And already we have a tornado watch in effect here from about Columbia to Kansas City northward into the Des Moines, Iowa area. I've only seen a couple of warnings there and one touchdown south of Des Moines. But let's go ahead and zoom into our region. A couple of showers and storms are beginning to, to finally move into our western portions of the area. You can see that from Gasconade County northward to Pike County. These are at this point sub-severe, but just to the north in Knox County, we've had ping pong ball sized hail in those cells and some warnings on those. Uh, but again, just watching this line starting to develop just to the west of the area and we'll zoom out a little bit more to show you those warnings and the yellow polygons to the north here. And again, some of that is very large hail. No tornado warnings on those at this point, but this is just beginning. And of course, what we're going to be watching is this area of low pressure, a very strong one with a trailing cold front. It has to get through here before our threat of any severe weather ends. So that's high wind and hail and that potential of seeing a few isolated tornadoes in the area. Upper level wind support, very strong. So severe weather today, we're in level two out of five being the strongest. And again, larger hail, which we're already seeing around Knox County, Missouri, outside of our viewing area. And those damaging wind gusts over 60 miles an hour, also that chance of tornadoes. But that orange area, better risk of seeing that is up there. That's level three out of five. Much more on our forecast, and I'll time it out for you coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Jim. Jim and the rest of the Five in Your Side weather team will be updating the forecast all day long. When we're not on the air, you can get the latest forecast sent straight to your phone by texting the word weather to 314-425-5355. Now back to breaking news and the death of Whitey Herzog. He was one of our town's most loved and talented baseball figures. This is from Cardinals opening day last year at Bush Stadium, but he was also at the 2024 home opener less than two weeks ago. Herzog was a player, scout. He ended his career managing the St. Louis Cardinals. It was a job he had for 11 seasons, winning a World Series title in 1982 and two National League pennants. The beloved manager, originally from New Athens, Illinois, continued to live in the St. Louis area even after his Cardinals career. We go now live to sports director Frank Cusimano with more of his life and career. And Frank, he's one of those figures you thought would be around forever. Yeah, Kay, in fact, I think for the last 25 years, we would go to Whitey Herzog's house in Sunset Hills, and we'd go down to the basement, and we'd sit there for about 25 minutes and talk baseball and life. And never once did I leave that house not more baseball educated and not laughing as hard as I did around Whitey Herzog. One of the great things about him is he was so candid. He had a low filter rating. You know, a, a lot of times he would say, you know, Frank, you're going to get me into trouble with me being so candid. I said, Whitey, nobody, nobody's going to be mad at you. And he would tell it like it is about players today. I remember one of his theories were, was that players worked out too much. They were too cut up and too defined. He said what they should do is eat more steak, more hot dogs, more beers, because you couldn't pull fat. <laughs> and another thing is his style. You know, before Whitey got here, drawing three million fans was never even thought of at Bush Stadium. Well, when Whitey put his brand of baseball, which was branded Whitey Ball, into Bush Stadium, 
they drew three million every year. And that's because he knew at that park, you weren't gonna hit home runs. So let's tailor the team around speed. So they had Terry Pendleton stealing 50 bases, Ozzie Smith stealing bases, Tommy Hur stealing bases, Vince Coleman, Willie McGee, Andy Van Slyke, and they just ran and ran. It's one thing to win three pennants, but it's another to do it in that distinctive style, which was built around speed. And that's why three million flocked to Bush Stadium when Whitey Herzog was the manager. And Frank, I was listening to your radio program um, earlier. The players all talk about how he was like a second father to them. He had such a connection to his players. As one said, he knew when to give somebody a pat on the back or a kick in the butt. Yeah, that's a great point, Kay. And he, he was a guy that didn't have a lot of rules. Just show up on time and play hard. And there was never any doubt. You know, a lot of times players second guess managers in the media or on social media. Every one of those guys knew that they were playing for the smartest baseball guy on the face of the earth. And they weren't going to second guess him. Like John Costello, a relief pitcher, said that when Whitey would come out to take you out of a game, you didn't keep your glove open where he'd take the ball out of it himself. You had the ball on your hand and you handed it to Whitey Herzog out of respect. So that's just another area that Whitey excelled in, respect from his players and treating them extremely well at all times. And he went into the Hall of Fame in 2010, but he was such a family man. Like I think of Mary Lou, his three kids, nine grandkids, like 10 great grandkids. He really had his own team at home. You know, he was so connected, not just to his community, but his family. Yeah, and Kay, you brought up the Hall of Fame. I was in Cooperstown when he went in. I can distinctly remember Doug Harvey, the umpire, uh, did a taped speech because he's, he was having some cognitive issues and it went really long. And then after the speech, Harvey went up there and talked for a while and made it even longer. So Whitey goes up there and he was ticked off and he said, well, since Harvey went so long, I got to cut my speech short. <laughs> it was classic Whitey Herzog. Even when he was on the biggest stage, he was going to tell it like it is. We just lost a gem, a great man, and just a great sports figure in St. Louis. One more quick story. At the Bragg and Rights game, they would always introduce, you know, Governor Bond or, St or United States Senator McCaskill, and everybody would politely clap. And then they'd say, and also here today is Whitey Herzog. And 20,000 people would get on their feet. Everybody loved Whitey. You know, they want to compare Whitey and Tony. Hey, you can compare them as managers, but in terms of popularity in St. Louis, people preferred the beer-drinking Midwesterner as opposed to the guy who drank red wine and came from the West Coast. Whitey One of a kind, a the great Whitey Herzog. Yeah, he was a giant. Yep. All right, Frank Cusimano live for us here at noon. Thank you so much, Frank. I know we'll be hearing much more from you throughout the day. As Frank mentioned, Herzog's brand of baseball in the 1980s was known as Whitey Ball. The Cardinals emphasized base stealing and situational hitting over power. He ranks third on the franchise's all-time managerial wins list with 822. Herzog resigned from the Cardinals in July of 1990. He was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame 20 years later. Tonight at 9.30, right here on Five on Your Side, remember the white rat with us. We'll stream Whitey, end of an era, right here on Five Plus. Join Mike Bush and a number of guests for a look back at his legacy with the Redbirds. Much more coming up on Five on Your Side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Breaking right now, crews fighting a massive fire in Ophelia. Allen, Missouri. This is the enclave at Winghaven Apartments just off I-64 near Highway DD. Right now, no injuries are reported. We do know, according to the fire chief, several families have been displaced. We're also following a number of developing stories from overnight. In Ferguson, a police officer shot and killed a man after witnessing a deadly shooting. It happened at the quick trip on West Florissant Avenue. Police say the officer was leaving the station when he heard gunfire near the gas pumps. He fired at a man after seeing him shoot another man. The man shot by the officer and the other man died. No other details are being released. Another shooting leaves a man dead in South St. Louis. Police say officers arrived at a home on Hartford and Bent last night. They found a woman dead on the porch. 
When a man inside the house fired at them, officers returned fire. They later found him dead. It's unknown whether it was the officer's shots that killed the suspect. No officers were injured. St. Louis Mayor Tashora Jones expected to sign a bill today streamlining the liquor license application process. The legislation allows owners to apply for a temporary liquor license, which would last 90 days. Owners in good standing would then apply for a full license by having a public hearing before the excise commissioner. Jones is set to sign that bill at Beyond Sweet Kitchen and Bar on Del Mar at 2 this afternoon. Still ahead, kids and social media. The latest call to regulate what your children are seeing online. Plus, the giant hole in the ground and the worries it's causing in a rural Illinois town.